This is a story about how the same can be different, about opportune escapes to flirt with a folly called White Nancy that's perched above a hill above my design studio and of darting along pathways and over fields. It's about how you can find joy and unique experiences out of repetition. Now, we all take things for granted. And, for example, we get in our cars, we take a journey, and we take that journey every day. I want to explore how we can break ourselves out of those things. So our haste to get things done means that our lives are kind of bumper to bumper sooner rather than later. So taking for things for granted is what I want to focus upon. It's both the power and the peril of repetition. It's powerful because when we switch off, we can switch ourselves on to other, less obvious things. But of course, switching off is just way too easy. We get blinkered. And I think you know what I mean. But wait, what would happen if we could train ourselves to tune in when we tune out? Now, within the sphere of this talk, I'm not here to tell you what you should or should not do with your lives. I just want to paint a patchwork quilt story of the things that I connect with, the things that are truly unique to me. I want you to put to one side the notion that doing the same thing is boring. Within this talk, I might have a slight edge over most of you, though I do know there are one or two other people that live in the same world as I do. I'm a creative, and some say creative people are just weird. <laughs> I will let you be the judge of that. Now, I'm not a scientist either, but when I'm out and about, I look for things to distract me. I look for exuberance. Creatives have a positive gene defect, and it is called wonderment. I allow my mind to be distracted, to influence my creativity. But I've worked on something called an equation, and I have one for life. This is my own. Unique experiences born out of repetition are equal to the difference between assumption and awareness. If you assume something is going to be boring, it will be. If you're attentive, you'll be aware. You'll notice there may be less obvious things in life. But what's this got to do with those unique experiences? Well, I'm sure you all get in a car, drive to work, to and from, get angry behind the wheel. We all do that. It's the same. But I do the same thing, but I walk. The same route every day. Sunshine, rain, daylight, darkness. It's nothing more than a commute. But the difference is that research shows us that when you walk, you're twice as aware and twice as creative. So I want to explore that idea. So in the spirit of TEDx, my idea worth spreading is to slow your senses down. Let's look at this a little bit further. Imagine not saying, hey Siri, what's the weather? Instead, no weather information. Sorry about that. Instead, why don't you just look out of the window? We can all do that. 
And when you look out of the window, you observe, you become aware. You might become aware of the rising and the setting of the sun and the moon. And of course, ancient civilizations use these things to discover really significant events. Take this image, for example. This was an image that I captured on December the 11th, 2018. And it was created from a series of repetitive observations. I was waiting for the sun to align with a local landmark called White Nancy. And when it did, it created this fleeting, exquisite alignment. And at that moment, lo and behold, two people walked from behind White Nancy and created this amazing power of three composition. I could not believe it. It took my breath away. And because I am a hopeless romantic, I love to call this image the proposal. <laughs> but as I left the scene, I returned to my phone. And I thought, how am I going to share this on Instagram, as we all do? And then I thought, wait a minute. I could perform some real science here. What would happen during the winter solstice? I could prove that the Earth's northern hemisphere tilts away from the sun during winter time, and therefore lowering the sun in the sky at its at winter solstice, basically. So I wanted to know what would happen. Would the sun come tantalizingly close to touching White Nancy? <laughs> Amazing. Another small, unique occurrence that was born out of repetition. Now, I've become a little bit obsessed with these events. This is sunrise behind a 4,000-year-old Neolithic burial ground here in the Peak District. But I digress. If you take the car to work every day, maybe you might pass a hotel. Would you stay in that hotel? Because you're so familiar with it. You see it every day. Would you stay there? Now, I walk across fields, pathways, over hills, and a lot of them become very familiar to me. A bit like the back of my hand. But, would you stay in this hotel? Imagine the four walls of your bedroom disappearing and being exposed to a great open wide space. Somewhere so familiar to you becomes very, very unfamiliar. It's amazing. And I'm sure that you've all gazed up at the night sky, looked at the colourful chatter of starlight, and thought, wow. And that's exactly what I did. Being on top of a hill with no sleep whatsoever is amazing. And as I do occasionally drift in and out of sleep, I see the stars click, click, click across the sky. And I realize that I actually become connected to the Earth's rotation. And for those of you who practice yoga, you'll understand that I really do feel like I become connected to the fabric of the earth. It's the only time I feel I can truly achieve savasana. But moments such as these, unique moments captured through repetition, need not be thought-provoking or so special. I imagine you love the feeling of sun on your face. And for those of you who live in Bollington, that's been pretty rare over the last few days. <laughs> We've had a lot of rain. And just to recap, I know some of you have already seen it, but 
that round whitish thing in my pictures, that's the sun. <laughs> February the 11th, 2019, as I traipsed my normal commute to work, was the first time the sun had risen above the hillside and cast its light upon my face. It was blissful. And you could feel, sense, the trees reaching out and towards the sunlight and warmth themselves. I carried on walking down the hill. And the sun came to rest on top of the distant hillsides. So I shimmied left and I shimmied right to roll the sun across the top of the hills. If anyone could have seen me, they'd think I was crazy or weird. One of the two. I carried on down the hill. And then I come to a sputtering little waterfall near a disused mill. And the low sunlight behind me is catching the water droplets splashing off the rocks. And I'm presented with my own personal rainbow. Absolutely fleeting experience and very unique to me and another reason to show how science can create artistic beauty phenomenal but these unique experiences need not be visual they can be oral too there's one thing that always changes from second to second minute to minute hour to hour and it's sound never the same if some of you catch the bus to work, if by the time you get on, you haven't buried yourselves in your headphones, one thing you'll be aware of is conversation all around you. And occasionally you might listen into those conversations. I do exactly the same. And yet the conversations that I'm listening for come from the trees. This is what I'm listening for. This is the song, a genuine commute. This is the song of a chiff chap. And he is really excited because he has reached the end of a journey. And that journey can be very much thought of as like a commute. But he makes our commutes pale into absolute insignificance. His commute's been 4,000 miles from West Africa. So it might be the end of his journey, but it's the start of a journey for all of us. He heralds the onset of spring. So when I hear his song, I feel genuinely uplifted because I know warmer days and longer evenings are just around the corner, I hope. But there's another bird call that resonates even more deeply within, with inside me. And it's the call of the song of a humble blackbird. It's just amazing. His voice has the fluidity and the sweetness of warm honey. You just have to stop and listen. Perhaps imagine yourself with a great friend and a wonderful, fabulous cup of coffee. You just want to linger, and that is how the blackbird makes me feel. But the odd thing is, I don't know why I'm so drawn to it. It's a quandary. Because if you had to listen to the same person say the same thing for five months, that sounds like nagging to me. <laughs> and there's a few nods in the audience here. I think you know what I mean but it's wonderful. My final experience, unique experience, born out of repetition, isn't visual, it's not oral, it's kinesthetic. I love to run. And by running, I find myself connecting to nature. It takes me to beautiful places. And if you've ever stood on top of a hill, being buffeted by the wind, you feel that exhilaration. You feel like you're connected to nature. So you'll understand, hopefully, what I'm talking about. 
Now, running along isn't easy. But I know what it's like to run on a mattress. <coughs> running towards the top of a summit, the cyclical left, right, left, right, feels like it's going on and on and on. And then I see cotton grass. And it's bobbing around in the wind. And it's like spectators waving flags, urging me on. And then I reach the summit. And I feel like I'm running on clouds. The landscape beneath my feet has changed. I'm running on peat. And I don't mean P-E-T-E. -E. Oh, sorry, Pete. Didn't see you there. Nice and soft, though. I mean P-E-A-T. Layer upon layer of naturally decaying plants and mosses that have been created from a cyclical, repetitious process over thousands of years. It's wonderful. And as I reach that crest, it's almost as if, as I feel the softness of the landscape, that Mother Nature is giving my feet a hug and saying, well done for cresting that summit. Now, this talk has been very simple, about simple pleasures, and I'm simply grateful that you've listened. What I really hope is that You've connected with me through some of these things, because I'm trying to connect with you. And if we achieve that, you might get an inkling of how you might discover some of these unique experiences in the everyday mundane life we exist. I want to take you back to the start of my talk. I'm being repetitious here, so please bear with me. I mentioned breathing. Now, when we see something amazing, there's usually an involuntary intake of breath. Wow! And we're told that when we notice the breath, it helps to reduce stress. We've heard about this. We calm ourselves. Maybe it also allows us to maybe engage with the less obvious. Now, I wander around the landscape. I connect with it, the pathways, the trees, the fields. I see the same people every day. I smile and say hello. I connect with them. And because of all this, I really feel like I have a sense of place. So I connect with myself. And in doing so, I breathe in and I exhale the art of connection. Thank you.